go. All right, we are live. I'm here. No, we're not live. <laughs> <laughs> we're live in my own mind. We're live. We're <laughs> Thanks for the reassurance. Yeah. I appreciate that. We're not live. There's a major difference. Well, we're live in person, me we're and you. Live. Yes, yes. Oh. Yes. But obviously, um, anyways, I'm just very excited. This is Ellie in space. Um, yep, she makes YouTube videos about space exploration. It's pretty cool. And I have a couple questions for her. Um, and I'm going to make this question a little more specific. How do you imagine the future of Austin? Oh, gosh. Um, I see Austin as continuing to grow. Uh, I see the traffic getting maybe worse because so many people are moving here, including myself. But obviously, I mean, this is becoming a tech hub. If you could see behind us here, we have Google and, you know, just big tech buildings. Um, and so I see the future of Austin as becoming more of a tech hub and a place where people just want to come and, and do business because Texas is a great state to do business in. And, yes. um, you know, it's a very active community. There's a lot of energy in the city and there's always something to do. So I think that those opportunities are just going to increase because Elon even said it's going to be the biggest boom town. It already is um, that we we've seen over the past 50 years. So. Every corner I turn, I see cranes, I swear. Um, <laughs> literally across the street where I'm staying, there's a crane. There's a crane everywhere I look. Um, I love the way the buildings look. They're all going to start to look very, um, like, all glass, blue, shiny, like. It's really a beautiful skyline. It's so beautiful. Like, I don't know, it just feels so modern, you know. It feels so new, and uh, it's very exciting. Okay, next question. How do you think SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, and advanced technology in general will change the world oh wow well i feel like it would help to maybe i mean all of them are already changing the world right correct like if you look at spacex's early days if you've read the book lift off by eric berger and you just think about they were tr trying to achieve what was thought of as impossible or unimaginable right um a, a private company being able to launch a rocket um and so obviously they've scaled way beyond that now and now they're working on the world's first fully reusable rocket but spacex has already drastically changed the space industry i can't imagine a space industry without spacex Same. i think i think it would be very disappointing and i think that you are seeing all these you know new startups and more private companies getting skin in the game because spacex made that possible and you know that spacex and the tesla journey are also very similar because they both almost failed very, and very close absolutely elon like had to decide and for some reason he chose both and you know that also looked impossible but it's uh the both of their stories are really interesting but even with tesla right now we're seeing these electric car initiatives and we're hoping to have you know i think that by i'm not exactly sure when we'll have mostly electric cars on the road but i think it's coming pretty quickly and aside from just being a sustainable electric vehicle we have you know fsd beta which is getting closer and closer to being fully you know um operating so fsd beta what is that uh, for Tesla self-driving, okay. full self-driving beta. Self -driving. So we Got keep it. getting Got closer it. and closer yep. to the car basically being perfect with like no interventions. I don't have a Tesla. Everyone thinks I have a Tesla. I don't have one yet. I'll say yet because Same. I think like living here in Austin and just like me covering the Elon Musk, you know, universe it's gonna happen it's inevitable but i don't have one yet but i've been in many teslas and done many fsd beta you know test drives and so they're like not perfect it's like if you're like you know babysitting a teenager who's learning to drive so they're just not quite there yet but they're really close but when they are that's going to be you know a game changer and think about how much safer the road would be if that's what i'm thinking too because you're still going to have people that drive drunk and you're still going to have people who text while they drive but like imagine if the car <laughs> just could keep like everyone on the road safe i yearn for that day so um yeah spacex has already drastically changed the industry and thank god um tesla is also like look at all of the other oems and like companies that are hopping on the let's um you know make cars electric because of tesla like tesla came first and then what was the other one Neuralink. i mean yeah, Neuralink. Neuralink is still Ooh. Neuralink is still really early in yes, its development absolutely. but what it's promising is just 
imagine so many people who have a loved one who suffers from dementia or Parkinson's and if they could have that fixed or cured um, or exactly. alleviated because of Neuralink, that is like touching an emotional side of helping humanity, right? Like they all touch different parts of helping humanity. Exactly. One of them is like energy sustainability. One of them is like being able to actually explore the stars and, you know, Quite deep literally. space exploration, right? And then you have like Neuralink, which is like bettering the health of people. And then eventually down the line, you know, we want to be symbiotic with this AI that yeah. is just increasing um, at a kind of frightening and alarming rate. I mean, Elon is so concerned about AI, it honestly kind of freaks me out because I'm like, if he's worried about it. Then we should probably be worried about it. <laughs> probably too. be worried, but I'm glad that he's at least someone who's in charge of it and, you know, or at least, you know, in a lot of senses in charge of what's going on with, um, with the future of AI. Maybe not all of it. And I think in some ways he's kind of said it, you know, we don't want it to get too late. Um, but exactly. it's like, it's like, yes, you want to be responsible with it, but it just, it, it's, it, it develops so rapidly. And at what point does it, does it take over? And is there, is there a point of no return with, you know, it just being more powerful than us? Okay. So this is perfect. Cause my next question is what are you most afraid of and most excited to see AI do for humanity? Um, that's a perfect transition. I mean, I feel like obviously there's so many movies and just, you know, scenarios about AI and robots taking over and, you know, the machine going bad on us. And, um, I think that that is frightening. I think what I'm most frightened of is not necessarily the uncertainty of it because uncertainty is always in the unknown is always frightening but it's more like the fact that really brilliant people are kind of like threatened by just the current state of ai because they see like stuff that probably most people aren't even thinking about so that i think that's what frightens me is like when you see people that are extremely competent and like well versed in deep learning and they're concerned i'm like okay this is probably something to be concerned about. Um, but what am I most excited for? I think, I mean, if you just look at how computers and electronics and, you know, smartphones have already enhanced our lives, it's like the possibilities could be endless um, if, if we get advanced enough with AI. And, it, you know, obviously we all hope that it's just a complement to our lives. And I think that there are a lot of things that'll have to be explored once AI is is more, um, I don't know, prominent in society. Like, will we need UBI, universal basic income? Probably, because a lot of jobs are probably going to disappear. Um, yep. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. These are jobs that people don't really wanna don't work. want to work. Um, and so it's, it's really interesting to see it kind of all unfold. Uh, but yeah, I think that it, 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 it can be a good thing, but there's obviously a lot of ways for it to go wrong. And it's also just kind of unknown still, you know, we, yep. the, you know, we've, we've written stories about it and seen movies about it, but like, here we are in real time. And you know, what Tesla's done with their Tesla bot, just in the short time that they've been working on it, they've really scaled it pretty quickly. Um, and progress it pretty quickly and then you have boston dynamics um and so like oh yeah it's it's we're still at a point where like the robots are cute and they're they're not really threatening um yeah. but but we will get there where the robots are much more capable and smart and just kind of yeah like gonna you know we're <laughs> have a mind of their own right have a mind of their own and we're next to them like so, and that's another reason why I want Neuralink to be, um, to happen because I want a chip so that I can like keep up. And I think that like, that may sound ridiculous, but it's so true. Like, it sounds scary right now. And when I tell my friends, yeah. they're like, you're crazy. Like for <laughs> wanting to do that. And I'm like, no, just wait. <laughs> but also like, why would you not want an edge? I mean, assuming like, okay, steroids would give you an edge to be like a more powerful, stronger athlete, but there's obviously some major downsides. But if there's, there's going to be downsides to Neuralink too. Sure, sure. But we don't know. What we they don't are know yet. what they are. But it's are like yet. if if AI is like 
is really everywhere, then you are going to be kind of obsolete if you don't ki- keep up. And um, so. I completely, completely agree with you. And my favorite movie is Interstellar. And in Interstellar, you got TARS and Case, the, the robots that they're, you know, allied with and friends with. And it's crazy. I mean, I don't know if we're going to see it in our lifetime, but SpaceX missions to Mars and beyond, I'm talking way out to net new planets, we are going to be sim- symbiotic with these AI robots. And like, we're going to be friends with them. We're going to have conversation with them they're going to be able to do things we can't do we're going to be able to do things they can't do um we're going to work together and it's going to be so cool because like we've seen these movies we've seen what our imagination has created about ai and humans traveling through space together would look like but we don't know until it actually happens what it's actually going to look like we're already seeing like i don't know if you know that snapchat just released you know my ai friend and there's like a just like an AI friend that you can have on Snapchat and snap them. And, and, and then I saw on TikTok this new app that's um, it's called Replica. And it's like you can have a friend, again, that's like AI, but that you can chat with or vent to. And like, I think that's super weird. That's not something that I want. But it's like, I feel like these things are just going to become more and more, maybe not normal yet, but we're going to see more of this. And it's like, it, it's just it's you, if you watch Black Mirror, there's so no. many like hypothetical scenarios where we explore like AI or like even replicating someone, right? Like if you had a loved one that died and then you're like replicating them. I think there's an episode about that. Yeah. And and they make like a clone of this person. It's like everything is the same, but they are not uh, the same person. And it's like that's just so weird to me. It's 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 very unsettling. Um, and it's like yeah, it's like. I don't think you ever can really replace a human. I mean, you could have, you know, a a robot boyfriend or girlfriend that, you know, you never get in an argument with. But, like, I think some of these, like, human elements we have to preserve. Um, And maybe it's just because it feels so foreign. I don't know, man. It's, It's, like, such a thought experiment that it's just, it could go on forever. But, yeah, we're seeing AI not only to help us, like, practically, but, like, emotionally (laughs) you know yeah i'd say emotionally like it's weird it's weird it's very weird (laughs) like hire a robot to be my friend right but why am i so opposed to it like you know like why why am i discriminating against a robot being a friend i don't know maybe it just freaks me out it's it's a weird it's a weird concept it's a weird feeling of like empty i it feels like it might feel empty to like be friends with an ai you're like but it's also like not genuine you can program the ai you can't program a person to like you exactly i mean maybe a little stockholm syndrome would do that but you know it's like Uh, i can't you know like i just there's something that cannot be replaced about humans and i don't know uniqueness and but we talked about earlier like are we in a simulation and it's like part of me thinks we won't know like right like we we just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ellie. This has been. And on that note, I'm leaving. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna lower it down. That was intense. Got a lot going on up here, you know. Um, but super excited, you yeah. know. At the end of the day, it is exciting and frightening, but. I'm more excited. and oh, I, I'm way more excited. I'm way more excited than frightened. Way more excited. So There's a reason that I quit almost 10 years of being in TV news to cover this stuff. There was multiple reasons, but one of them is that this is exciting. This is inspiring. This is our future, right? Like, And that's way better than covering homicides and yeah. car accidents and stuff. Love to be ahead of the curve too, you know? People are going to start to catch on and we're like, we've already been here, you know? Exactly. And that's why I'm glad that the starship program is like finally you know we just had our first orbital test flight and so we're going to see more of that and it's like i'm still like yay it finally happened because the delays but that's just it's just there's always going to be delays it's you know rockets are hard um fsd is hard all these are really hard problems but the the benefit to solving them is you know endless yep 
and and ai is going to make everything so much more safe too i thought about you know it, like as far as flying a v, flying a starship and 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 driving a car if you can have ai do it for you and they can predict accidents and predict they have sensors to sense everything around their surroundings they can predict ahead of time way more than we can for safety reasons uh we can we can make the world a lot safer with ai oh by far so even tesla's now i mean like i said fsd it's still in beta and it's not completely perfect but i feel 10 times safer in a tesla and it's like you meet people that have teslas and they're like yeah it you know i was going to make a lane change or i like the the car acted for me and i would not have seen that coming so it's like um it's already keeping people safe so that's exciting um and we just gotta be careful with great power comes great responsibility and this this ai stuff is is a very powerful um very powerful machine so yeah, i'm glad we're not in charge of it no yeah i could never i could never <laughs> be in charge of it hell no <laughs> definitely not qualified just here to observe it be a part of it be a part of the future and try to try to um meet other people like ellie um who are interested in this conversations in these kind of conversations so um if you like this video uh go ahead and give it a, a thumbs up and uh give ellie a follow and uh yeah thank you for tuning in awesome great all right let me airdrop that to you